Shalom to you. So in this video, we look at properties of linear functions. Um, okay, we'll be able to find the average rate of change and use it to determine if a function is linear or non-linear. And what does it actually mean for a function to be linear? So a linear function is any function of this form where um, the m is the slope and the b is the y-intercept. So where the line crosses the y-axis. I mean, in the equation form, we usually have it like y equals mx plus b. So the same thing, only in the function form, we use the function notation. So the graph is a line, a straight line, and the domain is all real numbers. So, okay. So we just have the constant here is always the y-intercept and the coefficient of x is the slope. So here, what is the domain? What is the range? Well, domain is all x values. So this will be the domain. The range is all y values. So these are the range. We can find them. We can plug it into our calculator. Um, if if you think it's faster for you, if sometimes you have ugly numbers, maybe faster to use calculator. So you can just type it in here, like I did this one, and then you find the f of negative two, f of one, f of zero, negative zero doesn't make sense. And then, so to find any of the one you found, you just select one of them like this one hit enter and then you go in and change to two or to whatever the one you're gonna find okay so if that's faster for you if you have a, multi, a lot of them to do then do it that way if it's faster for you to just multiply and then add that's fine too so this will be negative five the range will be negative five four 13, 22, and 31. What is the average rate of change? Average rate of change is slope. That is the change in y over change in x. So vertical change over horizontal change, which is if we take uh, any of these pair, so we can do 4 minus negative 5 over negative 1 minus negative 2. So that will be 4 plus 5. When you subtract an integer, you add its opposite. So negative 1 plus 2, that will give us 9 over negative 1, which is negative 9. So if you try any of these other one and check it, and you get the same thing. So let's check these two. Okay. Do the same thing. Change in y over change in x. 13 minus 4 over 0 minus 1. So 13 minus 4 will give us 9 over negative 1, which is negative 9. So the rate of change, which is the slope, is negative 9. And it is constant. So it is the same for all of it. Determine whether the function is linear or non-linear. Again, we have the, the domain. We have the domain and the range. So we're going to find the slope. Use the slope to determine whether or not it is, um, it is linear. So we can tell right away that this one is decreasing by or increasing. It's increasing by 1. It's increasing by 1. It's increasing by 1. It's increasing by 1. So how is this one increasing, going? It's decreasing. You can see you go from 4, 1, negative 2. This one is decreasing. So as x is increasing, the f of x is decreasing. So that means the slope is going to be negative. So if we try the change in y over the change in x, if we do like uh, 1 minus 4 
we got negative 1 minus negative 2. Okay, that would give us negative 5 over. Again, this is negative 1 and positive 2 over 5. So, over, oh my gosh, 1. So, that would be negative 5. So, try another one. Um, This is oh, what am I doing? Sorry, I don't know where I got this. Um, hold on. Where I got this negative? This is one. It's positive one. It's not negative. So this should be. Yeah, this should be negative three instead. Over one. So this is negative five. Okay, so this is going by negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. So the slope is constant for all of it, and it's negative 3. So the same way, try this one, like this one, the half fraction, the same idea. So you can go change in y over change in x. So that would be 1 half minus 1 fourth over... Again, make sure if I go, I'm going this way. So you want to make sure you go this way also. Negative 1 minus negative 2. So you want to make sure you have a common denominator here. Multiply by 2, multiply by 2. So that would be 2 over 2, um, 2 over 4, minus 1 over 4. That would be 1 over 4. So try the another one of these two. So 1 minus 1 half over 0 minus 1. So 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. 1 half over negative 1. So this will give us negative 1 half. Wow. This... Yeah, we can see it's it's different is this one so it's zero minus negative one it's negative one here not one so that will make it positive one that will make it positive one half but we see it takes just two to see it's not working it's not constant they are not the same thing so we don't need to go ahead and check the other one if you like you can do that Okay, so that's what we do. We take the, we find the slope of each one of them. So like this, A, this is B. So we, if we work it out, take their X and Y values, find their slope, change in Y over change in X. We see this one, they are not the same, so it's not constant. So the change, average rate of change is not constant. It's not the same. Therefore, it's not um this one will not be a form a linear function so we do the same for this one okay we find the slope for each of them negative 0 0.25 is the same thing so this is a linear function if we graph it we can see the b graph is the slope of and it's coming down so it's negative the, the a is not a linear so you can see there's a little curve there so we can answer a bunch of questions on these determine the slope and the y-intercept. Well, we can, since y is by itself or the f of x is by itself, we know this is the slope and this is the y-intercept. So the slope is 3 and the y-intercept is 5. And then we can graph using the slope and the y-intercept, plot the y-intercept force. So this is positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, three dots there. So this is linear. Two points are enough to graph linear. Um, so you shall use a straight uh, a ruler. So slope of 3 is, is going to be 3 over 1. So we want to the change in y is 3 and the change in x is. So, but they're both positive. So you go up. Either you go up 3 can also be negative 3. 
3 over negative 1. So you go down 3 and the left 1. So since we don't have space to go up here, I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3 and go left 1. So, and then do the same thing. 1, 2, 3 and go left 1. You can keep doing that and get as many points as you want to, you know, to graph your linear. Okay. So determine the average rate of change. The average rate of change is the slope. So, the change in y over change in x. y over the change in x, which we already know from our graph, we can tell to go from one point to another is 3, 1. So it's the, the graph is increasing from left to right. So the slope is 3. Whether the function is increasing, we already see that it's increasing. We read from left to right, it's, it, it's going up. So if the slope is positive, it is increasing. If the slope is negative, it is decreasing. If the slope is zero, which is a horizontal line, then it is constant. So the slope here, the graph is increasing. Okay, so determine the slope. The slope is negative four, we can see. The y-intercept is two. Graph it, plot two. Uh, the y-intercept, that's one of the points on the line. Get more points using the slope. Again, the slope of negative 4 is either negative 4 over 1 or 4 over negative 1. So whichever one, again, is y and x, y up, x down. So if we, we have points to go for here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 up and left 1. Or we can do 4 down and right 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 and right 1. Either way, we get us a point on that line. This is a straight line. So you just have to pass through them. So the average rate of change, which is the slope, as we have pointed, is the change in y over change in x, which is negative 4. Whether the function is decreasing as we can see reading from left to right it is decreasing okay how about this one the slope the slope is zero so this is like uh, four of x when something is missing when you what you should add it means that that thing is zero so we can see when we add zero zero times x is zero and 0 plus 5 is 5. That's why it is missing. But you see the slope is 0. So the slope is 0 and the y-intercept is 5. So if we are to graph it, f of s at 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that means at every point, f, whatever x is, y would be the same. Okay, whatever x is, y will be the same. So it's a horizontal line. Y would be 5 everywhere. So the average rate of change is 0. And the, the graph is constant because the slope is 0. So just a theorem, you know, to know what we already said. A linear function of this is increasing over its domain if the slope is positive. It is decreasing if the slope is negative. It is constant if the slope is zero. So we can do a bunch of stuff with the function, um, like uh, doing operations. So make sure you, you follow the direction. So he says solve for f of x equals zero. So that means uh, this is f of x. So we take the f of x equals 0. So that means 3x plus 6 equals 0. So sub subtract 6 from both sides and then divide both sides by 3. So that's negative 2. 
So f of x greater than 0. Still f of x. So 3x plus 6 is f of x greater than 0. Make sure you be careful with inequality because the, the, the order matters. Okay. So we when we solve inequality, the inequality changes only when we divide or multiply by a negative number. When we add or subtract, it doesn't change. So x is greater than negative 6 over 3. We are dividing by positive 3. So it stays the same. So x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So we keep the inequality. So when we set f of x, I will use substitution to make sure I keep the order. So negative x plus 4. So when they are equal, collect like terms x to both sides so that will be 4x plus 6 equals 4 subtract 6 from both sides 4x equals negative 2 now I'm dividing both sides by 4 so x equals negative 1 half Okay, how about when this is this do the same thing uh, f of x is 3x plus 6 is less than or equal to g of x is negative x plus 4 the equation you know doesn't have much problem you just have to be careful with the inequality and know when the inequality sign changes so it's going to be the same thing less than or equal to 4 now we subtract 6 from both sides so 4x is less than or equal to negative 2. So again, we are dividing by 4, and 4 is positive. So don't be confused with the negative. Yeah, the divisor is what you have to watch out for, and or the multiplier. So this is going to be x has to be less than or equal to negative 1 half. Okay, so in real world application, we can use this to solve problems. What is the cost of this? Okay, they give us the function and C is the cost. And the X is the number of minutes used. So make sure you identify what each variable stands for. So since we are asked to find the total cost when we use 150 minutes, so we substitute 150 for X and then solve the problem. So for A part, we have C of 150. So now we replace x with 150, 0 0.30 and 150 plus 7. <clears throat> so we do the calculation, we get 52. So make sure you follow the order of operation, multiply this first. Um, B says if the bill, so the bill gives us the total cost. How many minutes did we use? This is how many minutes. Oh no. So then it means we are going to replace C of X is 220 equals 0 0.30. Now we are looking for X. So we have to solve, subtract 7 from both sides. And then we have 213 equals 0 0.30x. Now divide both sides by 0 0.3x. We get 710. Okay, the last one, the same thing. So we are... How much minutes can you use if you have only 120 dollars? So we're going to do the same thing. Uh, one, subtract seven from both sides. So now, if we solve this, we're going to get x is going to be about three seven six point six six repeating. Okay, so now they ask us the maximum number you can. Now, this is not when we want to round up. We can, Even though this is up to five, we cannot round because, because you cannot get more than the money you pay. 
so rather you get like so the maximum you can you know get minutes you can get is 376 okay so again watch for such problems so the maximum you can get is 376 not 377 so you have to interpret the situation and know when to round up and when to round down so supply and demand uh the wage is given the following function then we are given the function already sometimes we are asked to write the function so when we are given the function it makes it easier so these two functions we can ask respond question the equilibrium is when they break even so that's a break even when they are equal so after they break at that one point the point of intersection from the for the two lines and then they go their separate ways. Um, so set the is each of the function equal to each other and then solve. Okay. So and then it asks you, yeah, determine the price of the quantity. When one is greater than the other, you set it at the inequality, just like the last problem we solved. Set the inequality greater than whichever one they ask you, and then solve, like here. You set the two operations equal to each other then collect like terms and simplify p is 20. So, so what does that mean? You'll be able to interpret it at exactly 20. Uh, both of them will have the same price. It will not matter. But outside that one point, they will be different. So when will the, this, uh, the s function be greater? So set the inequality after 20. When it is exactly 20, we know they are the same, but after 20, so greater than 20. So if you graph it, you see that point of inequality, 20, 600. And then you can see the function going up after this point. It goes up. It increases faster than the other one coming down. So depreciation is uh, the when you have the value of anything coming down. Let's say you, you buy a car. If you buy a car and you add that, Point. when if it's a new car the price will be high because it's new but once you start using the car the value will start going down so if you want to sell the car after one year or two the car will cost less if you want to sell it after one you're gonna cost less after two it's gonna cost even less because the fact you're using it is that it decreasing depreciating the value so that's what that simply means so it's applied to uh, real life like that we can write a linear function and then uh, use that just like the other problem to solve okay we can write a linear function and then use x as the input the number of years or number of minutes or whatever it takes for that to um, so the slope is the rate of that depreciation okay the rate of the depreciation okay and don't want this to get very long, so I'm going to stop it.